What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm checking out a brand new case from NZXT. This is their S340 Elite. And if you're watching this video on the day of upload, that means this case just launched today. Hey, brand new, it's hot. So obviously as the name suggests, this is working off of, or this is an iteration I should say, of the original S340, already a very popular, critically acclaimed case. So there have been some much needed improvements of that case with the Elite version, and we're gonna be going over that today. Now. Retail price, first off, MSRP in the US is $99.99. Let's just call it $100 flat. Comes in full matte black. There's not a, another freaking color on this thing. It's just pure black. I love it. It's like the monolith from 2001 Space Odyssey. However, they are gonna be releasing a matte white and a matte black and red version later this month. So stay tuned for that if that's more your thing. Uh, but I personally like the all black finish. Still get the very same simple and sleek, minimalistic design. Looks beautiful. Nothing really on the front, it's just Boom, slab, NZXT logo on the bottom. On the back, you've got a 120 millimeter fan mount with the included fan right there, of course. Seven expansion slots and a power supply bracket with thumb screws for removable, easy entry of your power supply. However, look at this. You also get a power supply filter, dust filter that doesn't suck. The S340, the predecessor, had a had jack shit for a, for a dust filter. It just had it just had the the screen. There was no like casing around it. There was no frame. It was just a flimsy flimsy old screen held in by little tiny latches. It was horrible. This one's on a rail system. It's not magnetic, but it still gets the job done. Very nice improvement there. And of course, the one that's probably been glaring you in the face since this video started is the gorgeous tempered glass side panel. This thing is 100% tempered glass. There's no plastic or anything on here. There is some black trim. There's some black colored trim to match and blend in with the edges of the chassis itself. But other than that, left to right, top to bottom, 100% visibility of the inside of your chassis. So none of your hard work that goes on inside of the case goes unnoticed. It makes me very nervous, but it's also very beautiful to look at. So uh, good on you mates for, for that NZXT. You get four thumb screws to attach it there very securely with uh, the indents for Phillips head screwdriver. Always nice to see. On the very bottom, you get the same four feet with the uh, rubber bottoms that you saw on the predecessor as well, so it ele elevates your case. Now on the top of the case, there are some interesting things here. Now apart from the uh, 120 or 140 millimeter fan mount, which uh, they do include a 120 here. That's a 120, right? Yep, that's a 120, uh, which is set to exhaust. I wouldn't recommend intake because there's no dust filter on the top here. You do get some very nicely updated front panel connectors to make your gaming desktop experience that much more simplistic and efficient, particularly for VR. So why don't we go down that? Apart from your headphone and mic jacks, you also get two USB 2.0, two USB 3.0, and an HDMI port. So there is an HDMI pass-through cable inside this case with an HDMI port at the top so you can actually plug in a VR headset, which is so much nicer. If you guys are early adopters, you have an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift, for instance, you know that it's a pain in the butt to fish around the back of your case to constantly plug it in and, and unplug it whenever you're not using it because a VR headset is not a peripheral that just stays on your desk 100% of the time. You pull it out when you're ready to use it, or you pack it up and you wrap it up when you're when you're done with it. So the HDMI port on the front of the case makes it much easier to get in and out of your VR experience. And they've also included this very handy magnetic cable management puck. I've never seen one of these before. For. It actually comes apart, so uh, what, what this does is it slaps to the, the front of your case, like so. Basically, you can wrap up your, your cable length. All the cable length from, coming from your stupid VR headset can just wrap around that thing, and then you can either put the VR headset on top of your case, which maybe I wouldn't recommend because the matte finish, while it's not very finger, fingerprint prone, can scratch a bit easily. Uh, so maybe you could just hang the VR, VR headset straight onto the puck, or you can just keep it on your desk area. Either way, a very elegant and classy solution for wrapping up them cables, but also keeping your VR equipment nearby when you're ready to use them. And the reason why the puck splits apart is so if you have an extra lengthy cable, you have more room to wrap it up with. Handy. Now, obviously at this point, you guys can tell that this is not a standard scripted review of mine in any way. Instead, I thought it would be kind of cool, a little bit different to actually just do a hands-on build with the S340 Elite, get my hands dirty a little bit, so to speak, and uh, just kind of document along the way what works for me and what doesn't with this new case. So I think it's gonna be fun, I'm excited. I think this build's gonna look pretty badass by the end of it. I just kind of scrambled, scrounged around for some hardware uh, in my room, but it's looking pretty good. I think it's gonna look really good on that with the tempered glass and the side panel. And, oh. All right, let's build the crap out of this thing. All right, so I have removed the side panel and I'm installing the motherboard. So the S340 Elite has pre-installed standoffs and the, uh, the center standoff is actually a raised post. Many of you guys are familiar with that. 
just helps you to uh, center the board and keep it in place just like so while you install the rest of your standoff screws. Super cool. I'm gonna go ahead and bolt this board down, make sure it's nice and snug. Now onto the radiator installation. We're gonna have to pop this front panel off. Comes off just like so. It's got a couple latches that easily uh, allow you to remove it and replace it. Uh, also, just like the old S340, you've got tons of ventilation at the top and bottom here. So even though it gives off a really enclosed look, and it looks super sleek, doesn't look like much air is getting through there, but there actually is. It's coming through both sides of the chassis that way. And then you've also got a magnetic dust filter, a very long one, full frontal filtration, very nice. Now a couple mounting options at the front here. Uh, you can do two 120s or up to two one, uh, 140s. So we've got, a, again, a, two, a 280 millimeter radiator here. However, the caveat of the S340 and the Elite as well, you can't install the radiator first. You have to install the fans first and then the radiator because there's just not enough clearance to install the radiator first due to the uh, the front IO connectivity up here. It's actually blocking this rather long radiator. So what we're gonna have to do is install the fans first. So that can be that can be a bummer if that's not exactly the configuration you were looking for. I was hoping to see maybe that NZXT had done something about that with the Elite version, but nah. Oh, I'm installing these, these fans the wrong way. Damn it, Kyle. Have you never built a computer before? So I'm gonna go hoses at the top of the case. And from here on out, you kinda just screw. You just screw your way to victory. Oh, I should also mention that there's plenty of cutouts uh, behind these fans here to route your fan cables through to the back side of the case. So there's a look at the front, and uh, we're not quite done with the front yet. We shouldn't be replacing the, the front panel on just yet because we're gonna install the, the hard drive next and you actually need access to this area right here in order to mount that. So, all right, we've got a single two terabyte WD black that we're installing here. I'm just gonna slide that in like so. There's uh, two, two bays for three and a half inch drives. And these are just straight up bare bones. There's no rubber anti-vibration padding of any kind. This, I mean, this looks like it could have been from like a, a $50 case or something. Uh, it's pretty it's pretty minimal here. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why even the, well, why are you doing the storage right now? It seems kind of early in the build to do storage. Well, therein lies potentially another shortcoming of this case, and I'll show you that right here. All right, so here's the hard drive from the other angle, and normally in, in a typical build, I would install the power supply first before ever touching the storage. But in this particular scenario, you can see you just saw me uh, screw in two, two screws from this side of the hard drive, but there's a third one that we gotta get on the right, on the right side. And in order to get that one, we kinda gotta like put our hand in here and dig around for it. It's not the easiest screw to get in there. You kinda have to look and block the camera a little bit, and there you go. So as you can see, I'm really using all the clearance I can get for my hand to be able to access this screw here. You can see I've also switched to a shorter screwdriver in order to make that, that uh, connection there. So having a power supply installed first would have made things a little bit more difficult, especially with uh, certain cables sticking out as it is not fully modular, the unit that we're using today. Now another addition that NZXT's added to the S340 with the Elite version is that you now get an SSD mount at the front of your case, right on the wall of your power supply shroud. You still get the two that are uh, on top of the power supply shroud with beautiful cutouts so you can route your SATA cables through. Um, however, you've also got this one on the front here which is much more visible through your tempered glass side panel and you've got a little cutout here to route your cables to the right of that SSD. However, those cables, if you're gonna be mounting your SSD there, also need to pass through this hard drive cage for your three and a half inch mechanicals. So if you were to have an SSD mounted at the front and a second mechanical hard drive in this cage, well, you would kind of be blocking any SATA cables from that SSD because there's really not much room for them to pass through at this point with the uh, two of the drive slots occupied. So what you would have to do is probably either install the SSD somewhere else, but if you really want to show it off and you want to have it in that slot, you could slot your second mechanical drive at the mounting point at the very bottom of the case. So you do have three, potentially, potentially three slots or three mounting positions for your three and a half inch drives. And uh, this is pretty much at the very floor of the chassis. You would have to basically turn the, the case on its side and bolt in or screw in this uh, drive from the very bottom. It also supports a two and a half inch drive down there. So uh, in total you get three, three and a half inch drive mounts, as well as four SSD mounts. 
two on top of the power supply shroud, one at the front of the power supply shroud, or on the side of it, I should say, and one at the very bottom of the case. Next up is the power supply installation, which is pretty straightforward. You've got this bracket at the back which, that I mentioned with these thumb screws. Comes out really easily, like so. Mount the bracket to the power supply. Shove all the cables in first through the back of the case. And you wanna make sure that the power supply is face down, or the fan is face down on that power supply because you do wanna take advantage of that dust filter. There isn't really much ventilation at the top of that power supply shroud. So you would be starving your power supply for airflow if you mounted it the other way. And then you just screw in the thumb screws. Voila, bada beam, bada boom, bada boom, boom, boom. So now we're gonna go ahead and install our SSD here. I've chosen this position because it's unique to the Elite version of the S340. So what I like to do is first undo the mounting plate with this thumb screw, single thumb screw. Love that it's just one screw that you have to deal with. So here's the mounting plate. We're gonna go ahead and screw the SSD to the plate just like that. And then before we replace the mounting plate with the SSD attached, what I like to do is actually route my SATA cables through the hole first. So there's the data cable. Power cable is over here. All right, and I like to connect these first to the SSD before I install the plate back to the case. It just makes it a little bit easier. You can kind of already bend the cables ahead of time knowing which way they're gonna need to turn. Line up the plate with the notches on the case and replace that thumb screw. Done. So now I think we're ready to start connecting and routing all of our cables in the system. Starting with the AIO, we're gonna route our power and fan connectors through here. So you can see I'm routing it through a cutout that's directly above the motherboard. It's a pretty spacious cutout. It's got room to pass some shit through. You've also got another nice big cutout by your uh, eight pin EPS connector here by the CPU. Uh, they're not grommeted, but they are pretty damn high up there on the case, so they're pretty much out of sight. Doesn't bother me too much. As far as our USB 2 connector for the pump, or I'm sorry, for the uh, the software support for this this Kraken, we're just going to route it through. It just routed it through the uh, one of the two cutouts that's on the power supply shroud. And these cutouts are for little connectors like that, your front panel connectors, which we're going to connect right now, as well as the two SSDs that would go on your power supply shroud there. And God said, let there be sound. Then he plugged in the HD audio connector. Eight pin EPS in the house. And here comes the 24 pin ATX motherboard power connector, which I am passing right underneath the uh, cable management bar, which is uh, a familiar, familiar feature from the original S340. I'm sure you guys remember that. This bar right here, it actually has a, a pump mount here as well um, for custom water cooling. Um, but this is a really nice solution that just offers a really clean aesthetic while hiding all the cables that'll be plugging into the side of your mo your motherboard. Like uh, like your 24 pin ATX, your USB 3.0, which on the Maximus 8 formula is actually a right angle connector, which I think actually works out better with this particular cable management system. SATA cable one and other SATA cable. Now, one thing I wanted to point out about this cable management bar is that while it does a really nice job of concealing a lot of the motherboard cables here that plug into this side of the board, it simultaneously blocks your radiator and it kind of limits the clearance of your front radiator support. So for example, I could not do a push-pull configuration right now uh, because this cable bar would be in the way. There's just no physical way to get another two fans on here. Um, even, even at this lower section where the bar doesn't protrude quite as much, there's, it's still covering up these, uh, these two uh, screw holes here on the radiator. So that's kind of a bummer. If you want to do some custom water cooling, you, you're probably going to want a thicker radiator than what's on the, the Kraken X61. But unfortunately, you're going to have to remove this cable bar, which I believe it is removable. Yes, there's one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, five or six screws holding it in place, which seems like a lot. I don't know why there's so many damn screws holding it in place. I mean, it's also providing some structural integrity to the chassis, so perhaps that's why it's got so many screws in it. But you would have to remove this if you wanted to expand on the front radiator solution of, of your particular build. So uh, bear that in mind. Then I forgot about these front panel connectors, didn't you? Well, I didn't. 
Getting ready to install our video card now. We've got uh, this little metal plate at the back of the case that's held in place with two thumb screws. Easily comes off, just uh, gives you better access to the other thumb screws holding your expansion slots in place. Do, 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 do. I hate it when manufacturers tighten thumb screws to the point where you need a screwdriver. It just seems counterintuitive. Damn it, I just realized I installed the wrong PCI slot. Son of a bitch. Here we go. All right, so we've got a GTX 1080 here. Founder's Edition. I'm sorry, this is a 1070. Founder's Edition, uh, which is about a 10 inch card, I believe. So obviously you can go probably 12, maybe even 13 inches. Whoa. On the graphics card length, if you so wished. So yeah, I mean, you can install pretty much any length graphics card for the most part, if you're gonna be rocking a similar setup as this. Bear in mind, however, if you were to remove the cable management bar and have like a super fatty push-pull radiator at the front of your case, that is going to limit uh, how long your graphics card can be. Do, 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 Cable management time. So here's our first look at the business end where all the cable management takes place. And first off, there's a pretty large CPU cooler cutout here so you could replace your CPU cooler without having to uninstall your entire motherboard. You could just access the, the CPU cooler backplate from this area right here, which is very, very convenient. And um, you've also got a lot of tie down points that you can see strewn about the case, which is uh, also very handy. However, one of the big improvements here on the backside over the original S340 are these cable clasps right here, located here, 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 and here. You get four of them in total, and they are incredibly handy. This is probably my favorite, I don't know, favorite cable management solution in a case. I like this more than cable ties, tie down points, you know, uh, Velcro straps, all that sort of thing. These are pretty freaking sweet. The only complaint that I have here is that they feel a little bit on the cheap side, uh, especially when you open them all the way. It kind of feels like the plastic gets really weak as soon as you open it, you know, any, anywhere past about this point, uh, which makes you a little bit concerned. It kind of like, I don't know, it, it, it causes a little bit of concern while you're building, which is never a great thing. Um, I haven't had any problems with them snapping or breaking. However, I've just started building with it right now. If you were to do three or four builds in a case like this, would these wear out over time and eventually maybe snap off? Possibly, I don't know. But from the looks of it, um, they, they, do the, they, they do a great job. They just feel a little bit on the economical side and uh, I don't really wanna test them too much further. But why don't we go ahead and uh, start wrapping things up here with the cable management. Of course, you have plenty of space right in front of the power supply. Of course, your mileage will vary. If you have a really lengthy power supply, you might not have as much free space down here for uh, storing excess cables. Oh, look, what's that? That's the HDMI pass-through. Beautiful. I have never seen one of these in the case before. I guess there's a first for everything, so that's kind of cool. Uh, of course, our, our Founders Edition card does not support HDMI on the front there, so we're gonna tuck that away for now. And I'm just gonna go ahead and wrap up the rest of this stuff with the help of these handy cable clasps. You know what, in fact, we actually have so much freaking room for cables back here that I'm going to add some of these extensions. Oh, hello, SATA. Hello, SATA. Would you like to meet my other SATA port? We can have a SATA party. PCI Express, sometimes you're so expressive. Now for your PCIe cables that power your GPU, you do still have that cutout on the power supply shroud if you wanted to route it straight from the bottom there. However, personal preference of mine, I still like routing mine from the side here, peeking out through the cable management bar. And then we've got fans, bitches. Yeah, these cable ties make it super easy to remove or add any cables to the bunch with just like zero effort at all. I mean, I haven't spent any time. I've barely spent any time on cable management in this case, and it looks it looks like I have. So that's that's definitely saying something. And just like that, our build in the S340 Elite is pretty much complete. But there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about before we close out the video and I give my closing thoughts on the case. Uh, is this new product, this other product that just launched with NZXT, this is their internal USB hub. It's a USB 2.0 hub. So something like this would come in real handy where you'd actually plug this into your motherboard 2.0 header along with some DC to Molex power. Uh, I do wish this was SATA. That would be, that would, that would have been clutch guys. That would have been super clutch. Uh, but then the basic expands your USB 2.0 connectivity. Uh, of course, the, uh, the, the, uh, the lead that goes to your motherboard connects to this white port here. 
and then you've got three additional headers, three USB 2.0 internal headers, as well as two external headers. So this is just great for things like, uh, you know, AIO liquid coolers, for example, or lighting accessories, fan controllers, all that sort of thing. The best part about this, probably my favorite, is that it's completely magnetic. So if we turn the camera up here, so check this out, boom. Or how about this, boom. One more, boom. Yeah, you get it, it's a magnet. So it sticks to pretty much any magnetic surface in your case, which makes it really easy to just store away in your build. Of course, you wouldn't be able to put it here, for example, because it wouldn't have enough clearance for the side panel to go back on. But if you wanted to store it, say, underneath your power supply shroud, the magnets pretty much do all the work. You don't have to like bust out any cable ties or Velcro straps to, to restrain it to make sure it doesn't get tossed around. It pretty much just stays in place with that magnetic feature. Pretty cool. I'll leave a link to this guy in the description below if you guys want more info on it. If you need to uh, future-proof your cases for a USB 2.0 connectivity, you need some additional expansion, it's a pretty handy feature or a tool to have, I should say. But on that note, this build is complete, so we're going to go ahead and slap the side panel back on and close this video out. So here she is, everybody, all decked out with the side panel slapped on there. And I will say, with the tempered glass, it, it really breathes new life into the S340. It just looks amazing in person. I don't know how how good it looks to you guys on camera, but it just looks phenomenal in my opinion. Uh, you can just really see a lot more of the uh, of the system itself. It just tempered glass. Just there's no comparison compared to like acrylic or plexi. Um, so good on you guys uh, at NZXT for that upgrade. There's just so many little improvements that really add up to make this a much better case than the original. Um, including those cable management clasps at the back. Even though they're a little on the cheapy side, uh, they still do a great job at keeping everything nice and tidy. The side panel on the back went on like super easy, uh, no problem there. Also, the, uh, the, S the SSD mount, there were a couple cons here, right? The SSD mount at the front, while I do like this new implementation, I think it looks fantastic having an SSD right behind the tempered glass. Uh, you do have to route the SSD cables through that three and a half inch mechanical drive bay, which can, can cause issues if you wanted to populate both of those slots. However, I did notice there's a small cutout to the left of the SSD, which you could route your SSD cables through there, but it looks like you would have to flip your SSD upside down and no one wants to really display their SSD in that inverted position. So that's kind of a moot point there. Also, the cable management bar still brings home all the same great assets that it did in the original case. However, it's just in the way if you wanted to expand on the radiator solution that you see here. If you wanted anything thicker than a 15, 20 millimeter radiator, or you wanted to do push-pull, for example, you would have to remove that cable management bar, but that bar is such a, a crucial element in terms of aesthetics and feature set to the, S3, uh, the S340 line that it would be kind of a shame to have to remove it for any reason at all. Also, mad props to the uh, updated dust filter for the power supply. That's a huge improvement as well. And last but not least, you guys probably noticed the Oculus Rift that's hanging on the front of this case utilizing that magnetic cable management puck which I actually did have to separate because uh, to, to wrap the full length of that cord it's a pretty long cable and also utilizing that front panel HDMI port which if you, if you guys are into VR or you're planning on building a VR gaming system this is the next case to get until more competitive options at this price point roll out with similar VR oriented features because it's just it's perfect for this sort of thing. So um, altogether, great job NZXT. If you guys want more information on this chassis, you can find a link in the description below. Also, if you feel free to check out my awesome sauce. No, it's Bitwit now. Damn it. My Bitwit store where I'm still selling t-shirts like the CPU cooler shirt that you see me wearing here. Help support the channel and all that sort of thing. Also, feel free to toss me a like on the video if you enjoyed it. That is all for now, guys. Be sure to subscribe for more tech stuff coming at you really soon, and I will see you all in the next video.